Hello friends, welcome to REST API demo. Guys, in this video, we'll talk about the most popular REST API functions. Like we are going to discuss GET function. We use GET function to fetch either a single resource or multiple resources from the database. Okay, then we'll talk about POST call or POST mapping. Basically, we use POST call to create a new resource. Then we'll talk about PUT function. PUT is basically to update to create a new resource if it does not exist okay then we'll talk about patch we use patch function to partially update a resource guys and then we'll talk about the delete mapping we use delete mapping to delete a specific resource or all the resources from the database all right guys so that being said let's begin the video so guys in this video we'll be creating a spring boot bash project we will be using h2 database we'll deploy our rest api code on tomcat server okay and we'll be using postman to test our rest api endpoints all right guys let's move now guys here i put all the endpoints that we are going to discuss in this video so guys if you look at the endpoints most of the endpoints look exactly same right but the difference is with the functions say for example i have to fetch all the resources i will be using a get call to this particular endpoint to fetch all the resources right which looks exactly similar to the post call right and to delete also we are using same endpoint but the difference lies here in the function if i'm using a get function then i'm going to fetch all the resources if i'm using a post function it means we are going to create a new resource and if i'm using delete with the same endpoint it means we are going to delete all the resources all right guys now if you have to deal with any specific resource we have to pass the id say for example i want to fetch a single resource so i have to pass the id here to fetch the specific information okay say for example i want to update a specific resource i will pass the id here right and say i want to delete any specific resource i have to pass the id right so the endpoints look exactly similar right but the difference lies with the function that we are going to use with the particular endpoint all right so guys i will talk about each endpoint in the more details in the demo section all right let's move all right guys let's have a look at our project structure okay i am going to start the ide so guys here is our project we have a controller class here in controller we have injected the service layer let me open the service class and in service layer we have injected the repository class let me open this particular here this repository is an interface and we are extending jpa repository okay to perform all the database operation okay now if i go back to the controller class what do i have i have a get mapping there is a one function okay to get all the resources find all function from the service layer and if i go inside what are we doing here is basically we are calling find all function from the repository all right guys so basically now if i have to test our get mapping this is the endpoint i'll simply copy the endpoint and i will go to the postman okay i'm going to make a get call so here i have to choose the function get so by default it's get only i'll paste the endpoint and i'm going to click on the send button so guys basically we are making a get call to fetch all the resources or all the instance from the database so what do you see here in the result section we don't have anything there is nothing returned all right guys so what i will do now we'll first go and work on the post call so post is to create a new resource so as of now we don't have any resource right so we have to go to the ide and we'll write some code to make the post call let's go back to the ide all right guys so here i have added the code to make the post call i have created a function called add user we are passing the instant information here right to our function here we are calling the save function from the service layer so if i go to the service layer let me click on the save if you see what are we doing here is we are calling the save function from the jp repository to save the information to the database all right guys now guys here let me just explain that i have already configured the h2 database here you can see all the information in the application properties file okay now guys let's go back here now guys if you look at the the value which i am returning from this particular function is is an object of response entity so here we are passing the student that we are adding to the database plus status code all right guys now guys to test this particular application let me just stop i'll copy the endpoint let me just start our application now here you need to understand that how can you pass data because here you have to supply the information right so if i go to our entity class student what do we have we have got id name and email right so we have to supply the required information to create a resource all right so i'll go to postman we are going to make a new call i'll choose the post function because we are going to make a post call the endpoint is exactly same http colon localhost colon 8000 slash students right now guys here we have to pass the information right so i'll go to the body here and i'll go to row 
I'll go and choose JSON here. Now here I am passing the input value into the JSON format. Okay. So, so what do we have? We have got ID as the one attribute. Value is going to be one. Then we have student name. Okay. Pass as. Okay. And in the email, I'll simply pass key at the rate abc.com. Doesn't matter. You can pass whatever you feel like. Let me just click on beautify. Okay. So basically, this is what we are sending to the our REST API. All right, guys. Now let me just click on send. So what do you see here? You have got the response. So the response is the student object with status code. Here you can see 201 resource created. All right. So if you go to the code and if you look at the response here, we are returning a response entity with the student object plus status code. Right. So this object has got three attributes that you can see here: ID, name, and email, and status code, which is 201. So all right, guys. I hope this is clear. So now, guys, we have inserted one record in our table. Right. We are going to test the get endpoint now. So I'll go to the postman. Let's go to the this particular endpoint. Get call. Okay. And I'm going to click on send. I'm expecting one record here. So here you can see that we have got one record. ID one Ricky S Ricky at that ABC dot com. Right. So guys, if you want, I can simply go and create another resource. Resource two, and I will add Rahul D here. Rahul at that ABC dot com. Right. So this is the second resource which we are going to add. I'm going to click on send. So I can see the information here. I am the status code 201 resource created. All right. Now, guys, if I go back and click on the get call, so now I should see two records, right? ID one and ID two. All good, right? Now, guys, next is how can we fetch a single resource? So, guys, here we have seen that we can fetch all the resources on the database, but how can we fetch any specific resource? For example, I want to fetch the resource where ID equals to one or ID equals to two, right? All right. So, how can we do that? So, let's go back to the ID. So, let me just Pause this video for a second. All right, guys. So here I have added some code to fetch a single resource. So guys, our endpoint would look something like this: HTTP colon localhost colon 8080 slash student slash ID. That is what we want to fetch. For example, I want to fetch the ID one information or two or three and four, right? So in the path variable, I am using ad, the curly braces and the ID. So basically, this is a variable. So this is a variable. It means it can have different values. Okay. Now to read this particular variable from the path. From the URI path, I'm using add path variable annotation. All right, and then guys, if you look at it here, this particular line, line number 46, what I'm doing is from service layer, I'm calling a function called find by ID. If there is no information, I'm throwing an exception called record not found exception. There is a record, I'm returning the information, the resource information with the status code found. So found is 302. All right, guys. Now let me show you what is there in the service layer. So find by ID here, what I'm doing here is I'm calling a function from the repository called find by ID. Okay, so JP repository has a function called find by ID to find a resource by the ID. Now to test this particular endpoint, I will install our application. Let me just go and start again. I'll copy the endpoint. Okay, so okay, now let's go to the REST client. So guys, here we are going to make the get call again, but this time we are passing a value here, a parameter one. I want to fetch the resource one. I want to fetch the resource where ID equals to one. Simple. Let me just click on send. So what it says, it says resource. Okay, all right, guys. So to fix that resource not found issue, what I did earlier, I was using the in memory database. Okay, but now I've changed to file based, right? So basically, every time if I restart my application, I want to persist the data into the file system, right? Now I'll just go back to the postman. I have to add the resource. So we have added the resource one. Okay, let me just go and add one more resource here. Resource. So we have got the new resource added and here I can see the status code. Okay, run our get call to get all the resources. So here I can see we have got two resources, resource one and resource two, right? But our idea is to fetch a specific resource. So here we have passed the resource ID one. I want to fetch the, the resource where ID equals to one. So here I can see the information. We have got ID one, name, email ID and the status code 302. All right, guys. Now if I go and look for resource two, I'll simply change the ID, click on send and here I can see the result all right guys now guys in case if i look for a resource it doesn't if it does not exist for example if you go here we have only two records id1 and id2 right what if i go and try to fetch a resource id3 let me click on send what do you see it says not found right so basically this is what we did here in court if you go to our controller class so as here you can see that here we have put a check if resource does not exist if this is false then throw record not found exception okay so if i go to this particular class here we are sending a status code not found okay 
which is 404 not found with the message all right that is what you can see so if you go here you see this particular part does not exist resource not found and the status code is 404 okay all right guys now we'll talk about the put mapping or the put code so guys here to understand the put function you have to keep two things in mind two points basically one that we use put function to update an existing resource okay so always make sure that if you want to update an existing resource go and use put function second what it does if the resource does not exist it creates a resource for you okay so guys let me explain the code so guys here i have added the put mapping okay so this is our endpoint so our end so guys here the point is we are going to update an existing resource so we have to pass the id that okay i want to update resource where id equals to 1 2 3 4 5 1 so on okay and second thing you have to supply the complete resource okay so let me just explain this particular thing what is happening what do i mean by that you have to supply the complete resource so i'll go to rest api client okay let me just go and this time i'm going to test the put call okay i'll just copy the endpoint here http colon double slash localhost okay say for example i want to update resource one okay so we have to supply two arguments one is the id that we want to update resource id so here i am passing one now i have to pass the attributes as well that i want to update okay so i'll go row i'll go to json here and i'm going to create this an object okay so guys here we have already passed the id now, now i have to pass the other attributes okay see the other attributes are name okay so name say i want to change it to ricky wanting okay and say i don't want to change the email id i don't want to update anything into the email id so i'll keep the email as it is ricky at the rate abc.com okay but first of all you have to pass the id that we want to update okay and second thing you have to pass the complete object all the attributes of your object okay let me make this end so what do you see here you can see that we have got the resource id one name is ricky pointing it has been changed okay and the status code here you see success 200 okay so say for example you want to keep the name as it is and you want to change the email id only all right so for that say ricky dot p again you have to pass the complete object when i say complete object it means you have to pass all the attributes of the object okay now you see the name is ricky pointing and email id has been changed to ricky.p at the abc.com all right guys i hope this is clear if you want me to explain the code this is very simple i am calling an update student by id a function i am passing two arguments one is the complete object second one is the id that is where i want to update the resource okay and what i'm doing is here i am creating a new update object i am passing id from here and the values like name and email from the object which is coming from the rest client simple guys and here I have called the save function of the JPA repository to store the information, right? Now guys, let's talk about the second scenario. For example, so I'm going to add a resource called three, but I know that this resource does not exist. So I will pass some arguments. Let's see the behavior. I'll pass here file and here. All right guys, so basically we are going to make a put call to this particular endpoint where we know that resource does not exist and we have passed the complete object. Okay, so name and email. Let me click on send let's see the behavior so what do you see guys here you can see it is cost 200 okay we have got id 3 pile and email id let's go and fetch all the resources from the database and here we have got the new resource as well right so guys this is the beauty of put function so there are two points behind the put function that you always keep in mind one is we use put mapping or put function to update an existing resource if the resource does not exist put function will create the new resource all right i hope this is clear now guys next is page guys page is very important to understand so we use patch function to partially update a resource so when i say partially so guys if you remember here while using the put function we have to pass the complete object so basically we have to pass the all the attributes of the object but in case of patch you can specify a single attribute that i want to partially you can update your resource partially so guys let me do one thing let me write some code and let me explain how it exactly works okay all right guys so here i have added some code to perform the patch operation okay patch so if you look at here i have used at the rate patch mapping annotation so basically we are going to make a patch call patch is to partially update a resource okay 
partial update so if you look at it here i am passing two arguments one is the id that i want to update okay i want to update resource one and i have to pass the object so what i'm doing is first i am checking that whether do we have the resource or not because we are going to perform the update operation right so the very first requirement the resource should exist into the database if it is not there through an exception saying record not found all right now here in the else part what i'm doing here is i'm creating a new update object here okay i am taking the data from the current from this particular object current student object i am fetching the existing information and updating the existing information from data coming from the rest client okay and updating into the update object okay and here i'm simply calling the save function of my repository if i go inside the save call i'm calling the save function from the repository all right simple right nothing much complex restart our application i'll show you how this particular page function really works it is started okay it is done i'll go to rest client which is postman now this time guys we are going to test the patch okay so the endpoint will look like exactly the same so here i'm passing that i want to update resource one simple okay or say resource three so if i go to our get call we have got three resources right i want to update the name of this particular resource where id equals to three okay so i'm passing three now i'll go to here body row let me go and select json now guys remember this particular thing this is very important that i want to update name only right so i'm just passing partial information i'm just passing file g okay i'm just passing partial information i'm not passing email here just one attribute of the object okay let me click on send and let's see the behavior what do you see you have got id3 name updated file and then space then g email is as it is because we did not change the email id okay let's go to the get click on get and here also you see the updated information right so basically patch is to partially update a resource why do you want to send all the information if you just have to update just one attribute okay so guys let's have a look here at the put so guys in put you have to pass the complete object okay no matter what is the situation so for example if you want to update one attribute or two attribute or all the attributes you have to pass all the attributes in put but in case of patch it is not like that you just pass the attribute that you want to update say for example i want to update email okay so i'll just pass only one attribute which is email id okay so what i will do i will use file.g at the rate okay java.com simple right i am not sending all the attributes of the object i am just passing only one attribute that i want to change i want to update the email id that's it right let me click on send and you see here you've got the latest email id as well right so i hope you've got the difference between put and patch now guys next one is delete mapping so this is very simple delete can be used to delete a specific resource or delete can be used to delete all the resources all right so let me give you a demo let's go to the id let's first write some code all right guys so delete mapping is very much simple so i have used here at the rate delete mapping so our endpoint would look something like this okay so what i'm doing is i'm passing the resource id that i want to delete what i'm doing is i am first checking whether do we have that resource id into the database or not if it does not exist we'll simply supply an exception message that resource not found if the resource exists if the id exists into the database let's go and delete the resource so what i'm doing here is if i go to the service layer function i'm simply calling the delete by id function of jpa repository very simple okay i don't think i have to explain this particular thing let me just stop and restart our application and i will just give you a demo of the delete how can we delete a single resource okay this is just to delete a single resource all right let's go to the postman i am going to create a new request let's go and select delete now guys here the endpoint would look something like this http double slash colon, colon double slash localhost colon 8080 slash student slash one so basically i want to delete the resource where id equals to one simple right hit the send button what do you see here it says a message student one deleted successfully and here you can see the status code right so this is when you want to delete a specific resource now guys if you go and click on the get mapping where you fetch all the resources now you don't see the resource one it's deleted all right now guys in case if you want to delete a resource which does not even exist right say i want to delete a resource where id equals to five okay let me click on send what do you see here it says resource not found which is true we don't even have the resource id 5 into the database correct 
I hope this is clear. Now guys, we'll do one more thing. Delete can be used to delete all the resources in just one go. Okay. Let's see that behavior. So for that, we have to add some code here. Okay. So just give me a minute. All right guys. So delete is pretty much simple. So this time here I have used add the rate delete mapping. And if you look at the endpoint, I'm not passing any attribute. So if you look at it here, delete by delete a single single resource, we have to supply the ID, right? But here in the endpoint, you don't see that, right? Because why? Here we are going to delete all the resources, right? And if you look at the function, the implementation, what I'm doing here is I'm calling the delete all function of the JPA repository. But in case where you have to delete the single resource, I've invoked delete by ID function. Okay, to delete a single resource function. Simple, right? Now what I will do, I'll stop our application and let me just restart. So our endpoint would look something like this HTTP colon double slash localhost colon 8080 slash simple. We just copy this endpoint. I'll put the endpoint. I have to test the delete. Okay. I'm calling delete all. I'm going to delete all the resources, right? How will you know that we are going to delete all the resources or a single resource? So just by looking at the endpoint, you will come to know, okay? If your endpoint has some parameter, some argument, then it means you are going to delete a specific resource. If there is nothing in your endpoint, it means you are going to delete all the resources, right? Let me go and click on send. And what do you see here? All records deleted. Let's go and verify. I'll go to the get and click on get again. And what do you see here now? Blank, no record found. Simple, right? So I hope this is clear. So all right, guys, in this video, we have discussed get function to get a single resource and to fetch all the resources. We have discussed the post call to add a resource into the database, right? We have seen put function, put to update an existing resource or to create a new resource if the resource does not exist, okay? Then we have discussed the patch mapping. Patch function is to partially update a resource. While using the patch, you don't have to pass the entire object. You just pass the attribute that you want to update. Simple, okay? And then in the end, we have seen the delete, I mean delete, delete to delete a single resource or to delete all the resources from the database. All right guys, thank you for watching.